This is the Mexican and Filipino version of chocolate rice. This event is brought to you by HDH Wellness and Engagement um, and with our chef for the evening, again, Chef Gerardo and Chef Josie, who are from UC San Diego Catering. Okay. So we are going to like just quickly go over um, the history of cocoa and I have my student um, student coordinator Millie Sampson who will be doing a quick review of, um, of some fun facts for you for this event. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Millie. I'm a student coordinator for HDH Wellness and Engagement. So let's just kind of jump right in. We have a lot of fun stuff to touch on. So the history of chocolate is kind of complicated and had, so it's been a lot around for thousands of years. Um, it was first harvested as a crop um, by various Southern American cultures, namely the Aztecs and the Maya. So to the Aztecs and the Maya, the cocoa bean was culturally significant and was used as currency given to warriors as a reward and also served at royal feasts. And the chocolate itself um, stems from two Nahuatl words, um, chocolato and cacahuato. Apologies if I am pronouncing those wrong. Um, but so those two words are both um, from Mayan and Aztec culture and is significant because it means bitter cocoa. And so in both of those cultures, they drink um, a bitter chocolate drink that is much, much different than what we consider to be um, chocolate today. And so chocolate is now um, a worldwide consumption or consumed worldwide because the Spanish invaded South America and they discovered the incredible value of cacao as a crop and took it back to Europe and eventually spread it all around the world. So moving from cocoa to your cacao to um, our first dish, champorado, the Mexican version of um, chocolate rice. So that dish originates in Latin America and um, is an adaptation of the original Aztec and Mayan drink. So the traditional Aztec and Mayan beverages um, combined chocolate with masa and were much more bitter than the chocolate beverages that we consume today, as I mentioned earlier. And they were thought to endow the drinker with strength um, and other admirable qualities. So when the Spain invaded the Americas, they adapted and appropriated this traditional drink by adding dairy, sweetener, and other spices. Um, and spread that popularity around the world. So Champorado is kind of a combination of the original drink that combines masa, water, chocolate, um, and other spices. Um, and as I've already mentioned, very different from modern hot chocolate, but a little bit similar. And so, yeah, that's kind of the history behind chocolate and Champorado. And so, now we're going to move on to the cooking portion. And so we've set up the ingredients here for you to see. So if everyone um, can switch. So if you look, um, there's this is the recipe for the champurado. This is the Mexican version. So we're going to start off with that. And um, here's your ingredients. Millie, I'm going to stop sharing my things. We can shift over to Chef Gerardo. Hello? <clears throat> Millie, it's the other um, view for Chef. Okay. While Millie gets that figured out, we have, so if you want to click your speaker view, I love, by the way, I love that you're doing this with your pod. I see a couple people. You want to share? Let's like you want to share your video. We'd love to see how you're doing and how your progress. If you have any questions um, for this, you can type it in the chat, and then I will be feeding it live um, to our chefs, and they can talk and hopefully answer your question while they're cooking. 
Okay, Millie, can have you pinned? Um, can everyone see Chef Gerardo's um, video, or is it still just me? Still you, Mona. Still me. Okay. I have Gerardo pinned instead of Mona. I'm not sure what's going on on that end. Um, That's weird. Okay. Right. Can anyone else see Chef Gerardo? No. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll try removing pin. Um, okay. Chef, do you want to go ahead and start? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, cool. Millie, okay. you have the wrong chef showing up on the other. You, he has two up. It's the one that's muted. Yeah. I've pinned him and unpinned you. Um, I'm just trying to pin the wrong one. Okay. Millie, you have okay. the wrong view for Chef. Uh, sorry, we have like two cameras up. Is he named the same? Yeah, I, I think I might have entered the same name. Okay. Because we see a black screen right now. Has it changed? Um, no. Now it's me in my pot. <laughs> <laughs> Just Josie. Hi, Josie. Hi. I mean, I can do the actions while he talks. <laughs> okay. <Not> the same. <laughs> there you go. There we go. All right. Perfect. All right. Hi there. Um, okay, so tonight we're going to be making uh, the Champarello Mexican version. Um, this is a dish that when I was a kid, my grandmother made it for us every year. Um, I never really knew why. I never made the association until much later, until I was older that, you know, Champarello meant that I had tamales. So every year when they were making the tamales, she would make Champarello and then it, we'd have these huge pots of it. And it was... Um, you know, you come in from a long day out on the ranch and it's, you know, really cold in the desert at night sometimes. And these were just, it was a really good warm drink to have. Kind of, kind of made you feel good inside. Um, so the measurement on the, uh, what we have in the recipe that we sent you is we have masa uh, raw sugar, cinnamon stick, and semi-sweet cooking chocolate coming together. But to simplify it for you in your bags, uh, we sent you maseca, um, the uh, abuelita chocolate, which combines the chocolate, the cinnamon, and the sugar already, and a couple sticks of cinnamon. So we'll be able to put that all together pretty quick and easy. Um, and the cinnamon stick makes a really nice garnish. Um, so we'll do that right now. Uh, what you had was a quarter cup, I believe, Mona said, of the masa. Um, and so to add, you're going to add about a cup and a half of water. So you're going to get a cup and a half of water into a pot. Okay. What's, our, what's our heat, Jeff? Um, like, should we, should we turn on our pot? Yeah, you're going to want to get your pot on. Get the water into it. Okay, what um, what should be medium or low? Um, you want to go about medium low. Okay. You don't want to go too hot because the the corn, uh, the maseca, once it starts to cook and thicken, it will want to stick to the bottom of the pan. So okay. if you go to about like a medium uh, medium to medium high or medium low, sorry, uh, you should do well. Okay. So right awesome. now I've got the water in. I've got it over about a medium heat, and um, I had the pan. Kind of preheating already so it's already kind of at a at a nice warm temperature um i'm going to add the masa now uh Sorry, the chef, well, really quickly how much so if some people just joined can you tell us how much water again oh sure that was about a cup and a half of water so you can start with about a cup of water and then add more if you need to um i i just put the whole cup in the, the cup and a half because i know Already is pre measured, so. And then just FYI for all of your masa, it is somewhat, it's a quarter, 
it's a quarter cup of masa in there. So do they use the entire packet? They will use the entire package, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, one of the things that Mona had asked about earlier when we were talking about the recipe was the difference between the masa and maseca. Uh, masa in the recipe and, in, and a traditional masa is kind of a more coarse ground um, corn. And so it requires kind of soaking and then cooking it slow. The maseca is really fine, so it cooks a lot faster. So we'll be able to do this pretty quick. Uh, okay. Once your water is pretty warm, like tea brewing temperature, um, should have some small bubbles in it. You're gonna throw your maseca in and then just stir it in. Oh. Um, chef? Yes. For, so just to give everyone a heads up, your, your packets were labeled masa, but it's actually maseca that is in there. I thought, I didn't realize there's a difference between the two so until today. Thank you for teaching us that. Okay, cool. So now you're just going to want to heat this up as it heats. Uh, the maseca is going to thicken and you will see it noticeably thicken. Get it up with a nice forage consistency as it heats. Chef, um, yes. in terms of consistency, is it supposed to look like mashed potatoes? Uh, yeah, it should be a little bit thinner than that. Thinner, okay. If you've, if you're, if you've got water. mashed potatoes out, you can add a little more water, exactly. Um, the thing about this too is as it cooks, it will continue to thicken. Uh, so you want to just be careful of that too. Uh, So oh, yes, you can add, Margaret, your, your question. Yes, um, you can go ahead and add the whole packet of masa. Gerardo, Chef Gerardo. Yes. Could you show the camera what your pot looks like? So uh, yeah, yeah, give me just a second. Okay, so at this point you should have something that kind of looks something that like this. Um, a thicker, porridgey looking thing. And if you look at it, you can see it's kind of got some body to it. Okay. Lily, can you sh um, flip to, to my phone? Because I want to show, like, because I put the entire packet plus a cup and a half. And then maybe show Chef, like, what mine is looking like, because this is what the students have. Yes. Oh, sorry. Can y'all see this? Yes. So oh, wait, Lily, you're on my the wrong camera. It's my phone camera that needs to be pinned. Yeah, your phone camera is. It is oh, okay. It's so weird, my thing isn't I'm showing. Not seeing it I'm not seeing it on my other on my other laptop. Okay, so so yeah, your consistency there um, is pretty nice. You could probably do it with a little more water. Okay, a little more water. Yeah, some some people like it really thick. Um, and, and some people like it thinner. So it's, it's, it's a matter of preference and it won't make much of a difference either way. Um, if, you, if you wanna be able to drink it and you feel like it's too thick to drink, add more water. Okay, so then once you get that to where it's nice and thickened and it's at a good consistency where you want it, then you're gonna add... Millie? You're gonna add the chocolate. Can you refin, Chef? Thank you. So what I did here with uh, with this chocolate and um, with the abuelita is you want to use three quarters of that round. Okay, you have a whole circle there. Uh, take three quarters of it, break it up. Um, if you can break it up into smaller pieces, the smaller you do it, the faster it will melt. Um, but either way, once it gets in there, it will melt down, just keep stirring. Um, again, once this stuff begins to thicken, and you can kind of see it's what I'm doing right now. It so will Lily, Lily, for the cocoa, it's not cocoa. Don't use the cocoa, that's for the Filipino version. It's the abuelita, it looks like a, it looks like a circle. So um, 
Do we have an example, Abuelita? Um, what I have here is. Yeah, that one. This. And, and what I did was I broke out the three quarters of the circle, so I still got a quarter of it left. Um, and to make it easier, uh, what I did was just put it in a bag and then pounded it with a, um, a rolling pin a little bit, just to break it up. I turned my heat on lower so that, because I'm gonna it's gonna take me a minute <laughs> to break this abuelita up. So again, it's not the cocoa, it's the abuelita, it's the circle. So three out of the four triangles. And if you break it up smaller, like Chef said, it should melt quicker. So yeah, you'll be using this. Once you get the chocolate in, the chocolate's dissolved, it's pretty much done and ready to go. Um, again, the, the abuelita is gonna have the cinnamon, it's gonna have the sugar, it's gonna have a little bit of spice in it already, heat. Um, there are people that, you know, it's, this is one of those dishes where it's infinite variations. Um, and so a lot of people prefer to just have regular chocolate, it's very rich chocolate. Um, and some people want to make it spicy. So it's, the abuelita is a nice middle ground, I think. It gets you good flavor with a little bit of spice without being overpowered. Smells good. Cool. How's everybody coming along? Now, does anybody have any questions or anything? You can also unmute yourself if you'd like to. Add. I know everyone's hands are kind of full right now. Hey, Chef Gerardo, I have a question. Yes, yeah, Chef. So is this typically, it's typically served hot, right? Yes. But could you drink it cold too? Or can I put it in the fridge? Is it gonna be like chocolate pudding? It, it um, yeah, it will go cold. Uh, I, I never personally had it cold, but I mean, it is one of those things that we were, we would put away and we could reheat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I'm in, like any porridge, I think that it would be fine cold if you wanted to be able to have it cold. Mm -hmm. So you could make this ahead of time and then just bring it back up. Exactly. Back up. I could put yeah. it in the microwave or something like that and just heat it back up. Yeah, it, and it'll it'll thicken a little, so you add a little bit of water to, to thin it back down and get it that consistency you want. You're, you're good to go. Nice. Um, I've always just had it hot because it's it's a winter. Well, thank you. Is there stuff we drink this basically like almost it's almost like a pudding. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Okay. Do we put the cinnamon on now? What's that? Do we put the cinnamon stick? Oh uh, no, actually once you're done. So I've got it nice and, and thick now. Mm -hmm. We'll go right into the cup. Oh, okay. So Chef Gerardo, would you put the cinnamon stick in while everything is like heating up? Oh, garnish. Garnish. Um, again, the because the the abuelita has the cinnamon in it already. Um, so you you don't necessarily need to add more cinnamon into it. If you if you want a more cinnamony, a little more more of that cinnamon bite, then by all means add it in early. Um, Otherwise, it, it's really nice to go in as a garnish like this, and it will impart flavor as you stir your stuff to keep it kind of, kind of in motion and warm. I think that looks really cool. It and it's so really good. delicious. It's so good. 
Okay, I'm gonna. I'm getting ready to pour mine in my thing here. Um, anyone wants to share what theirs looks like? We can all <laughs> turn on our video. Is anyone struggling? I know that went kind of fast. Mine came out really watery because I didn't have a measuring um, thing for the cup. So oh. it's okay though. It's fine. <laughs> well, well, that's not too bad because all you have to do is just cook it a little bit longer. Okay. Um, and it'll continue to thicken. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. You'll be fine. How did yours come out, Mona? It came out, I don't know if you can see this. I can't, I can. That looks good, Mona. Kind of see it, yeah, it looks all right. Does it look, does it look like pudding? Should I? It, it, how thick is it? Is it like, can, it, can you move it around in the glass or is it kind of sticking? It's like, okay, let me get a spoon real quick. Margaret, I don't know if you can hear me, but yours looks good too. Like, it looks fun. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a good consistency right there, yeah. Okay, okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> it, should, it should be nice and thick, so when you drink mm -hmm. it, it warms you all the way down and kind of sticks in there. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you eat a churro with it and dip your churro inside there? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, actually, when I was a kid, my grandmother used to make uh, buñuelos. Oh, nice. And she made them with this really thin crepe batter, so they were really delicate. Mm -hmm. You have that and the uh, champurrado, and it was just this, uh, this really nice combination. So, what is, so this cinnamon stick that I put in everyone's packet, is, is it just a garnish? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. I haven't had that in a while. All righty. This is like almost like a meal. Like, <laughs> mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna post some stuff on Instagram so you guys can see. All righty. Does anyone have any questions for Chef Gerardo about um, the Mexican version of? Champurado. All righty. I think we are. Are we ready? Let me know if your thumbs up, thumbs down, if everyone's ready to shift over um, to Chef Josie and the Mexican, I mean, sorry, the Filipino version of chocolate rice. Cool. Okie dokies. Millie, can you take over now? Yeah, would you mind um, putting the slideshow up? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Okie dokie, let me. So, hold on. Okay. Okay, so now we're transitioning to the Filipino version of this dish. Um, so champurado is a unique variant of the Mexican champurado that we just made and it's from the Philippines. So Filipino champurado was created after a galleon trade between Mexico and the Philippines. And so during this trade, Mexican traders introduced their version of champurado, which is the drinkable chocolate beverage we just made. Um, and eventually the recipe changed and transformed into the Filipino version that we're going to make today. So what's different about the Filipino version um, is that it uses glutinous rice um, or sticky rice instead of masa or maseca. Um, and is more of a chocolatey rice pudding than it is a beverage. 
Um, and so one thing that I think is cool is that um, a very common topping in Philippines for this dish is salted fish. Um, and so, I don't know, if you decide you want to go out and keep making this dish and add a fun topping, that's something that's pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to switch over to Chef Josie. Hi everyone, um, I'm Chef Josie. Um, I'm coming to you from the Barrett Room at the HDH building. <laughs> I snuck up here. So I think we, uh, there we go, we got two screens. Okay, cool. Um, first of all, thanks Chef Gerardo. That was a really cool demo and now I want churros and hot chocolate. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we're gonna make champarado, which is the Filipino version of this dish. Um, so in your kit, you'll have uh, coconut milk, a can of coconut milk. You'll also have the sweet rice, um, evaporated milk and cocoa powder. Okay, so um, in the pot I have here, I have my pot on a uh, low heat, like medium low. Um, and what you wanna do first, uh, when I grew up, my grandparents were like, Filipino food always like comes from like family, right? That's where I learned to cook. Uh, Filipinos were all really close. My grandparents, they lived with us growing up while my parents could work and we learned everything from them. So this dish is pretty close to my heart because I grew up eating this as a kid for like breakfast or for a uh, snack after school. Um, we'd come home from school when I was younger and my, my grandma would call her Lola um, that's grandma in Tagalog. And she would be like, well, what's to eat? She's like, oh, I got, uh, I made champarado for you guys. So this is like, and I haven't eaten it since. And she passed away like uh, in 2013. And I just don't eat it because it just never comes to my mind. And I was telling Mona yesterday, I started making this dish and I was like, oh my God, I got overwhelmed with emotion <laughs> because it made me think of my little love. So it's pretty cool to do this and uh, share this dish with you guys too, because it's something really easy that you can make um, in your dorms. So um, first thing you want to do though is wash your rice. So you always want to wash your rice um, because there are some impurities in the rice and you always want to wash it just in case there's some like pebbles or something like you don't want. Okay. So Chef, really quickly, mm -hmm. um, the, the rice, do we use the entire half a packet? Yeah. So in your, in the packet, there should be a cup of rice. So you can, there's only half a cup. Oh, half a cup. Yeah. That's perfect. Use it all. Okay. Yeah. So you can actually put it directly into your pot, the dry rice. And then you can wash your rice inside this pot. So all you want to do is just add water, swish it around, and then carefully pour the water out. And then you want to do this like two or three times until the water is clear. So the water should be a little cloudy your first time you rinse it, and then you want to pour it out. Do you have all the ingredients? Uh, nope. You should be pretty good. The only thing is you're gonna have extra evaporated milk and you'll have extra coconut milk. So the can you have, I'd use half the can of the coconut milk and a quarter of the can of the evaporated milk, if that answers your question. I wasn't sure who asked that, but I saw it. Okay, so once you rinse your rice, I don't wanna know where Mona went, she might be rinsing her rice, but once you get your rice, rinsed and good. Then you can put on your stove at medium heat and then you'll add your uh, water. So we have two cups of water. And then once you get your water in here, then you can turn your heat up to like medium high. Is it two cups of water? Yeah. So I know it seems like it's a lot of liquid to just a little bit of rice but this is essentially a sweet rice porridge. So it's gonna thicken up and your rice will bloom and it's just gonna soak up all the water, all the liquid. So go for it. So um, in terms of heat, can you say that, the heat again? Say that one more time. 
the heat should be a medium or? Yeah, medium high, yeah. Medium high. Yeah. So. There you go, that's good. You can drink your Jumperado <laughs> while you're making Jumperado. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you have your water in here now. Um, you can also add your coconut milk. So I'd say half a can of the coconut milk. So it's not supposed to be boiling yet. It can, I can just add the coconut yeah, milk. Yeah, you can add it. You don't have to boil it. Yeah. That's a lot of liquid. It's a lot of liquid, but just watch. But if you're nervous, add a little bit at a time because then it's going to get thicker. So you can always just keep adding uh, liquid if you want to stretch it. So Luis, um, to answer your question, it says, what about if I only got half a cup of, yes, use the half a cup of sweet rice. That's actually what the recipe is for. Yes. yes. So use the entire packet. Sorry, I'm still opening my can. I got well, I got a new can opener that has a safety. You <laughs> can't quit, good. Because I am a child. <laughs> I, I can cut myself. And I like, I'm still getting used to it. So you don't want to leave your pot unattended, okay? Because it's gonna start bubbling soon. So you always you wanna stir it occasionally. Okay, so that way the rice doesn't stick. I can't get it off. And traditionally with a sweet type of dish, you want to use a sweet rice or glutinous rice or sushi rice because that grain is naturally starchier and it's naturally stickier than like a jasmine rice or a long grain rice or even brown rice. But if that's all you have and you want to make it, it'll still work. So only half the cup, I mean half the can of coconut milk, right? Yes. And then the evaporated milk, was I supposed to add it yet? Uh, not yet. Okay, not yet. Right. And I'm supposed to stir? Uh-huh. Yes. Stir. Is anyone else ha kind of like struggling? Because I, I, like, I feel like, and I'm still feeding now, so I should know how to make this, but I'm also like Chef Josie here. Like I, my grandma passed three years ago and there's certain dishes that I don't cook because it makes me want to cry. <laughs> So I don't think I've made, I don't think I've had champarado since my grandma was alive. I mean, yeah, same for me, because it's one of those dishes that you, you don't really think about making because it's like kind of so simple and it's so like comforting, but it's also, that's something you eat when you're a kid and it just never yeah. comes to my mind. But I think it's pretty cool to be able to do this. And I was like ratatouille when the mean critic guy ate the ratatouille and turned into <laughs> a kid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Like, I, I think, um, you know, like, like you were saying, it, it's like the way our, our Lola's would give us a treat after school. Uh huh. Yep. You know, or, or breakfast. It was like their way of, okay, something sweet for my anak, which is a child. In a <laughs> yeah, yeah. In Tagalog. Yep. And I think for a lot of Filipinos, the, um, a way to show like your love was through your food, mm -hmm. you know? And if you were ever to go into a Filipino house, I know this happens with my family. The first thing they say is, have you eaten? Did you eat? Before even a hello or how are you? But that's our way of saying, how are you? How mm -hmm. are you doing? That kind of thing. Because those conversations are always shared over a meal. So if you ever- I opened the other one too. What's that? Well, she said half a can. It feels like half, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> and this recipe is really forgiving, too. So huh? This recipe is oh, really yeah. forgiving. <laughs> so don't, don't be nervous if you're, if you're going off the recipe, because the recipe is always a really good guide, but you always want to have that, that feeling. That's like how you know something is good. You know something is going to be right. It's like cooking with love and your, your intuition and it'll come together. Don't worry. So mine just looks like water, like, like milk. Yes. So, okay. so mine is bubbling. 
So it's just gonna keep going. And then once you see less liquid, that's when we'll add the cocoa powder and the sugar and evaporated milk. Mine is not there, not even bubbling yet, or slowly bubbling. Now mine start slowly bubbling. Is anyone else's bubbling? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm drinking my mouse. So you can turn up the heat too. Hmm. Oh yeah, mine's bubbling now. Okay, there you go. So you want to stir it like every couple of minutes so it doesn't stick. Me too. Now, okay, my mom used to get, used to drive her crazy, but she said I stir too much. <laughs> Is there such a thing as stirring too much? Um, sometimes yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she probably is telling you not to stir it too much to don't break the rice, but mm -hmm. that's okay too. <laughs> Everyone okay? Any questions so far? No. So for everyone else, like with regards to the sweetener as part of this recipe, you can either add a little bit of sugar. This is um, organic unsweetened cocoa powder that you have in your packet. Um, so, you know, if you like yours a little, if you like dark chocolate, like you don't need to add any more sweetener, but if you like um, more of that milk chocolate vibe, then you might want to you can use, you know, instead of evaporate it, you might want to add like a sweetened milk. Is that, is that right, chef? Yeah. So you can always top it with like the picture that was shown in the slide before you could top it with a little uh, sweetened condensed milk. Um, that's one way to serve it too. Uh, my family, we never put the sweetened condensed milk over because my grandma, my Lola would just add sugar. <laughs> so she wouldn't add that extra for us, but I know a lot of other Filipinos would do that, which is probably really good. I we always had the sweet and condensed milk. My <laughs> my Lola would always try to make it extra sweet. Oh, she's nice. <laughs> she's nice. <laughs> I miss her. Oh, uh, yeah, we'd probably get in trouble. My mom would be like, "That's too much." <laughs> <laughs> no, my my grandma was always like, "You're too skinny." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so i mean in our in my house growing up there was always rice so it's always rice every day just plain hot rice or we would make a soup so much like kanji um mm -hmm. we'd make our oscaldo yeah. so it was uh rice and chicken porridge uh that we would always eat when it was cold outside if it was raining or so after the holidays, like after Christmas or after Thanksgiving, everyone would sleep over and then, oh, we're like, you could smell it. You're like, oh, Lula made our scaldo or Lulu made our scaldo or something like that. So it was, it's always fun and everything always revolves around food. And that's mm -hmm. now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so mine is really bubbling, but it's still pretty watery. I know um, Margaret, has yours started to bubble yet? Yeah, ours is bubbling. Okay. 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 Is, it is, it, is it thickening up? Because mine is starting to thicken up now. Oh. Mine's really watery, but it is starting to thicken up. Okay, that's good. And my heat is on um, medium high. Mm hmm. And I am Chef Gerardo. I'm I'm enjoying the masa while <laughs> the the champurado, the, the masa version. <laughs> I'm hearing you guys talk about your grandmothers, and it's making me miss mine now. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, if you're any of your grandmas are still alive, like oh. <laughs> call them cheers. tonight. Call them. <laughs> yeah. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Thank you. Tell them thank you. <laughs> Okay, so mine is starting to get a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see this here. So you want it to continue to get like this. So can you guys see that, how it's like a little thicker? So you just um, keep going. Mine doesn't look like, I don't know if mine looks like that. <laughs> yeah, there.
Mine's just really, I mean, it's starting to get thicker, so. There you go. Yeah, it'll take a little time. Yeah. Um, so this cocoa powder, am I supposed to put it in now or later? Uh, you want it to thicken up first. Thicken up, okay, thicken up. Once it thickens up, then we'll add the cocoa powder and the sugar. Wait, when do I put the evaporated milk? Towards the end. Oh, okay, I was like, oh my God, did I miss a step? <laughs> no, 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 towards the end, yeah. Okay. Did I already ask that question? I totally probably did. <laughs> so yeah, if you wanted to add a little more, like in the beginning, you could, uh, um, we could have done a one cup of milk mm. and less water. So maybe less water is probably better um, with a half cup of rice so it would cook faster. But you'll still get the same, same results. You know, I think... Um... There's so many good rice, like I think uh, rice soup dishes. Mm -hmm. Like you said, atascaldo or congee. Uh huh. That's so good. And yeah, you definitely remember the smells like right when you got home and you <laughs> know somebody was cooking. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you entered the, <laughs> the door. It was always because uh, because um, what uh, the Filipino, the arroscaldo is made, I it was always garlic. It was always sauteed garlic, ginger, and yep. onion, right? Uh, exactly. Exactly right. So is everyone's rice starting to, like, get bigger, almost like twice the volume? Yes. Yes? Okay. I, but it's still really watery. At least mine is. That's okay, keep going. You can turn up the heat if you wanted to too. And that'll let the liquid evaporate. Yeah, Margaret is saying hers is watery, but the rice is soft. Okay. But yeah, same, same with mine. Okay, um, that's good. Getting there. So this is like, like in view, it, it, this to me has a lot of, um, like I didn't realize how much coconut milk and like water and then evaporated milk you also added. There's a lot of um, milk. <laughs> yeah. So you could always switch out the evaporated milk to like uh, sweetened condensed milk if you wanted to, or if you wanted to remove that and just keep it completely vegan, you can, mm -hmm just remove the milk altogether and just use coconut milk. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So your rice looks like this, like more like porridgey. I'm wondering if I mismeasured my water. That's okay. Um, if you want to, you could pour some of the liquid out and then you'll still get there, but it should thicken up too when you add your cocoa powder. Yeah, I'll probably just and wait. It sits. Yeah. I increased my heat just a tad. There you go. What Everyone be careful when you increase your heat, okay? <laughs> what do we do with the evaporated milk? I think we forgot that step. Okay. Oh, so that, that's, you didn't forget it. Oh, okay. You haven't gotten there yet. I thought I did too. Okay. <laughs> okay, so since my rice is already porridgey. Yes. Oh, we're never gonna eat this porridge. Oh, it's getting hot. That's the best. I love the commentary. <laughs> I know me too. Everyone's struggling, but everyone you're like I think everyone's having a good time. I hope so. Okay, good. I hope so too. And don't worry, if it's if it's too watery, then just pour a little of water out. You'll be okay. Um, or just wait. I'm gonna wait because yeah. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna mess something up if I pour it out. <laughs> I really yeah. Will. yeah, you can also just wait and let it cook, let the water evaporate, and you'll be fine. 
Um, I have like a bigger pot because the other one I'm still like, it still has the champorado in it and it was the only pot that I had. Uh-huh. Does this look like too much? Okay, I'm gonna show my skirt. Um, okay, um, does this look like too much water? I, can't, I don't know if you could tell. Can you increase your heat? Cause yeah. you only use two cups of water, right? Yeah, well, I kind of eyeballed it because I didn't have a measuring um, cup. Okay, is it is it bubbling? Um, no, but I think it was because like the stove isn't really that like powerful here, I guess. Okay. So and I kind of put like a lid over it too, and that kind of helped. But this is just it without the lid. Okay, so what I would do is try to carefully pour some water out into the okay. sink. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. And then just blast your stove. Turn it all the way up. Yeah. Be careful though. <laughs> Be careful. Because like my I increased it really high and then all of us I turned my my face back to the camera and when I looked it was starting to bubble like way like over the pot. I think their stoves in the dorms are uh electric. So you oh. have gas. So your your gas stove is gonna be a lot faster. And the okay. electric stove. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mine is getting thicker. There you go. Um, still liquidy, but it's getting thicker. Okay, good, good, good. So now I'm going to add the cocoa powder to mine because now mine is like almost too thick. So now I have like the opposite of you guys. So okay. I have, mine is too thick. So then I'm just going to add a little more coconut milk, but the evaporated milk will also help with that. Okay. So you can, yeah, like I was saying earlier, you can make this version vegan too. So you don't need to, you can just leave the coconut milk or um, you could just do straight water and not and no coconut milk. And you'll also be, it'll also be good. And then you can sweeten it up with maple syrup or agave if you want to also, if you want to keep it vegan. So now this is the part when I added the cocoa powder that I was like tripping. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yours is really thick. Yeah, so mine is really thick. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you how to loosen it up. Okay, so I added the cocoa powder and you wanna stir it up here. And then I'm gonna add my sugar. I'm not adding any sugar on mine because I, I personally like I like mine, um, dark, I like dark chocolate. <laughs> okay, okay, very good. Yes, all of the powder. So Akash, um, yeah, you would all have all of the powder. Who doesn't love more chocolate anyway? It's a, it's a half a cup of um, cocoa powder. Yes. So that you can, I mean, once you do this again, you can always do it to taste too. So if you like more chocolate, you can add more. And if you don't have cocoa powder, you can use chocolate chips, um, that works too. Or even the uh, Abuelita's chocolate that you have from the Mexican version of Champorado, that works also. So I added my evaporated milk and now my consistency is a little bit looser. And yeah, I just added my cocoa powder. There you go. It is definitely getting thicker. There you go. So this consistency is like, for me, perfect. This is like home, like Lola's here and it's good. See, I, let me see if, Lily, can you try to pin um, the other camera for Chef Josie so we can see? Someone asked a question of evaporated milk. You want to put like a quarter of the can. So just just a little bit, like pour it out and count to two. Go one, two, and that's good. <laughs> so if you guys look at my phone camera, this is my consistency. I don't know if you guys can see this, but. Uh, can you put it a little closer? Am I on the phone? Are you seeing it on the phone camera or am I? I think we're on your phone camera. Yeah. Right okay. there. Yeah, see, that's good too, Mona. Yours is good. 
Yay. <laughs> Making my grandma proud right now. <laughs> right? I, I need to put the, the evaporated milk. And it says to shake, so I should shake it. <laughs> I never I never shake like can't. I don't know. <laughs> So I lowered my heat too. As it sits, it's going to thicken up too. So that's why you have your evaporated milk on hand, or you can add a little more coconut milk too to loosen it up. Yeah, it got really thick once you add the cocoa powder. Yes. So I'm adding a little more coconut milk because I just want to thin it out just a touch. And I like coconut milk. There's a lot of uh, Filipino desserts that are like mm. coconut milk and sweet rice. Yep. Ooh, my, what am, what's the purple one? Uh, the ube. But there's like a ube, is it the ube uh, rice? Hey. What's, what's the one that is like, is it like a, like a, another rice uh, dessert like that is like brown? Suman. Suman, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Suman. So then that they would essentially make the same thing, but with just sugar. And then they would cook it like forever, almost like you're making like mochi. And they would cook it forever until it's like really, really sticky and thick. And then they would scoop it out into a banana leaf and then roll it up. And then roll that whole banana leaf in plastic wrap so it would form like a little log and then that's how you would eat it. So you would unwrap it and you're just like, oh, it's like a rice candy bar. <laughs> that one's delicious. I yeah. remember. That one's yeah. my favorites too. So I just put it up in a dish like this. You guys can see. And now you have your champurado and then you could sweeten it up. You put a little sweet condensed milk over it. And uh, like Millie said in the, uh, in the slide, Filipinos are a fan of sweet, savory, salty. So there's this thing called dilis, which are little anchovies. And they're battered and they're deep fried. And we would eat that like french fries um, at holiday <laughs> parties. And then so they would put a little bit of the dilis on top too. But growing up, we didn't eat it with that because we were like, what? That's weird. I'm <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, that's what my mom was. I called my mom. I was like, dude, do they eat delis with this? And she's like, uh, yeah, but you guys never liked it as a kid. You guys are scared of the fish. So <laughs> we didn't serve it to you. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, cool. It smells so good. I want to taste. Hey. So now you have your champurado. Oh my gosh. This is the first time I think I've made champurado. I know. I, so, <laughs> so, so many emotions. <laughs> okay. I will say this because I bought the, um, the, if you like dark chocolate and you don't want to add any more sugar, it's, it has, it's great. It's like bitter, but it is a bitter chocolate. Mm -hmm. So if you want to add like, um, a little more milk and a little bit, a little yeah. bit of sugar or agave, do you add honey? You can add honey. Yeah. Any any type of sweetener. Okay, how's it going? Because I'm over here just eating now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it. done. And I'm just adding, um, it's so, it, lo it's, it looks beautiful, honestly, though. Yay. It looks beautiful. Hey, Josie, how much evaporated milk should people add? So if you don't have a measuring cup, one way to do it is when you pour it into the pot, count to two. So you're like, one, two, and then that's it. Sure. It's like a bartending trick. <laughs> Sweet. A full shot is four. <laughs> you want to count to four. <laughs> there you go. How's everyone doing? Everyone's okay? Still stirring.
Oh, okay. Exact measurement, a quarter cup. And we'll post, um, by the way, this video will be recorded and we'll, we're going to put it on our IG um, channel. So, uh, and we'll have the, the handle, it's UCSD underscore HDH wellness. It'll be posted on there. So you can view it and we'll also do another post just with a little bit more um, uh, information on the exact measurements. Lauren, how did it turn out? Good. I'll show you the texture. Like, I don't know if you can see. It's kind of like really dark where I am. It's like, but it's <laughs> well, like that's good. Good, Lauren. Yeah, that's good. If it sticks to your spoon, that's yeah, that's good. That's what you want. Yep. Good job. You're Filipino now. <laughs> <laughs> You guys were talking about like coming home to like your grandma. My grandma was around a lot when I was younger um, to help take care of us. And she would always like make us pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. And that's like the distinct smell and like food after school snack food for me. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I love that. Thanks for sharing that. I love how food is like such a connector with family and just you know, not even just family, just people. Like, I miss people. <laughs> I miss <connecting>. I know. <laughs> Bless you. But I, like, I think with COVID, um, not being able to, like, like, for example, my parents are older, getting older. So, you know, I'm very careful, like, even just hugging them. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, like, coming when my grandma was alive, like, the first thing I would do is, definitely give her like hugs and kisses you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's hard it's hard for everyone mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's pretty cool to be able to do something like this and kind of connect in in a way where there is some kind of food and just like talking about experiences because we're not doing anything <laughs> no. I <don't> know. <laughs> A little bit of agave in mine. There you go. All right. This is okay? so yummy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm totally crying right now. <laughs> it's totally taking me back. Yeah, this definitely takes me back. Mm. Okay. Well, let's see. If you have any questions, we're going to be here for a few more minutes, but um, this basically concludes our events and, um, you know, we have more events coming um, tomorrow. We're doing a Sachiko stitching event. He signed up and was able to get the kit for that. Don't forget to pick it up in our markets. We also have another crafts event coming up. I think it's December 3rd. Millie, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, is it the third? Yeah, it is. Okay, awesome. That's coming up as well. And you can pick up a kit um, and we'll email those that got, were able to get in. And if you liked this event, again, you follow us at UCSD underscore HDH Wellness. And we want to thank our awesome chefs. Thank